You know who I can do without? I can do without the people in the video store. Which ones? All of them. This is Massive Late Fee with Mike and Mark. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my co-host Mike. How you doing, Mike? Turn that off. How the heck are you doing, Mark? <laughs> uh, it's been a trying week. Uh, Mike already knows this because, you know, I talk to him more than than we talk to you. I, I talk to him more than just an hour a week. But uh, my computer kind of absolutely destroyed itself. Uh, so I had to do a whole bunch of really weird technical things that I'm not good at because I don't know anything about computers in order to get it fixed. But we are back up computers back working again. Uh, and we are here to entertain the masses because unlike celebrities that just want all the attention on them, we understand that our job is to entertain you and we're here to entertain you without looking for the adulation. But you can give it to us if you want. <laughs> How has your week been, Mike? No. Oh. Trying to figure out the whole balance of uh, education with the kids and that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. How is that going to view? Well, they so on Monday, they Garden City Schools decided to. I mean, uh, the city I live in school. Yeah, I say we can edit that out, <laughs> but you know you won't. <laughs> the city I live in schools. Uh, they um, they decided to to bring kids back into the classroom doing this online learning thing. And it took, it, there was not a whole lot of information about it, but eventually uh, my wife and I tracked down what we needed to track down in order to, to get the info. And, <laughs> and so we got it and they've been doing school. Basically what the, the teacher comes on for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Kind of tells them what's going on and everything, and then uh, they do pre, pre, you know, prepackaged assignments or whatever, and that's about it. They do that Monday through Thursday. Have your kids had any like as as uh, the city you live in done any any kind of like online stuff or anything? Yeah, there's there's a lot of self organizing on the parts of the uh, teachers, mm -hmm. uh, which in my opinion was a mistake. That right. Is because like the teacher, person, she's in middle school. She has teachers mm -hmm. a lot. So uh, every, every single one of them is on like it's like there's like school all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, like Zoom is one of them. No, there's no organization to it. I mean, yeah, it's nice that they set this all up, but it's like you should be able to just go to one. Yeah, that is that's one of the problems uh with us too is that they have so uh my two kids that go to school in the city that i live in uh -huh, one's in kindergarten and the other one's in fourth grade yeah. and, and and they use they use different things that, so they use different there's a different uh like app to communicate with the teachers and then a difference uh like i think one uses google meet google hangouts or something like that and the other one uses uh, I can't remember, but because basically Carol and I split things up. I I, I go to school, quote unquote, with uh, Bella, and then and then she goes to school, quote unquote, with Stefan uh, when she can. Uh, sometimes he just goes by himself, but I can't remember what what, what his teacher uses. But it's something completely different. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been something else. Ugh. I hope it's not. You hope it's not what. <laughs> Uh, what is wrong with this thing? All right. I think I think we're stable now. Yeah. This uh What's that? This new this new setup the computer keeps like it keeps making noise and it keeps like trying to close, I think. I don't know what the fuck it's doing. All right, uh, I think I think it's good now though. But uh we'll get to we'll what? Get, We'll get to you know what we know you're here for, Never. <laughs> which is the uh, the parents' guide game, uh, IMDb's best. 
Parents Guide game. Uh, Mike, do you want me to go first, or do you want to go first today? I, I, you know, usually I'm the one asking you questions first, but uh, you know, maybe you want to you want to go first. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Have I stunned you to silence? Or is the shitty internet connection? No, it it, uh, it went out for a split second. Oh, okay. But you, you might be. I might be what? I might be seven seconds ahead of you. Oh, see, this is the thing. They're setting up devices. They're setting up drives. The whole computer is still kind of trying to come back on. Uh, this was a late. A, this was a late solution uh, here to get this computer to to work. But I think. And I think it's playing a little bit with the uh, our internet connection here. But I think, yeah, good. I'm glad it's ready. It should be ready. I'm using it right now. Is that your first clue? Right. No. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't want to restart. Gonna, Hackers. I'm not going to restart. <laughs> well, we're not going to restart right now. We'll do that later. PC. All right. Uh, first clue under sex and nudity. Uh, there are belly dancers. Yes, please. <laughs> there are belly dancers in the background seen as the main character walks through a location of another location. <laughs> Team America World Police. No. <laughs> Um, oh, there's a lot of violence and gore. I'm going to, uh, I mean, there's a moderate amount of, no. Four uses of fuck. Um, <laughs> the main character gives someone the finger, parentheses, humorous. One use of motherfucker. A few uses of bitch and ass. The movie's not too bad with language. Probably had the least in the series. That gives you a little bit of a clue mm. there. Well, wouldn't it blow your mind if I just figured it out like by the clues, like these clues, like you know the swearing, like oh wait, did you say three fucks? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> um, I'm going to guess it is Terminator. Is that what you said? Terminator Two. Oh, oh no, sorry, not Terminator Two. Um. Let's see. Drugs, alcohol, and smoking. Uh, one of the characters drinks whiskey. <laughs> what? <laughs> one of the characters drinks whiskey, brandy, and other liquor through the movie. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, you said it's part of a series. Lethal Weapon 5? No, not Lethal Weapon 5. Just so you know, it's not it's not in the Terminator series or the Lethal Weapon series. I know I've been saying it like it might be, but it's not. Uh, literally nonstop bloody action throughout. Severe squared. <laughs> Se severe squared. <laughs> Bad boys. No. But I but I could see a bad boys fan writing that. <laughs> Severe squared. Congratulations to whoever wrote that. Oh my god. Okay. Huh. Um, the main character fights a man at a library. They throw each other around and punch one another in the face multiple times. Eventually, the main character gets the upper hand and corners the man towards a wall. He puts a book in the man's mouth and repeatedly punches the book. <laughs> he then twists the book, which breaks the man's jaw. He finishes his opponent by putting the man's head on the side of a book and then punching him, which breaks the man's neck. Jeez, I, was, I thought I thought I knew what this was until like, there were some deaths involved. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, as I say, twenty-two Jump Street. No, not twenty-two. There's a, a, a library fight. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the main character fights four men in a corridor filled with different types of bladed weapons. He brutally kills them all by stabbing them through the neck, 
head and chest. One man gets stabbed slowly through his eye. We see this up close. I feel like I should know this movie because it sounds like it's up my alley. I I will say that I'm not 100% positive you've seen this movie, but I'm pretty sure you've seen this movie, and I know you've seen others in this series. Huh. Wow, I'm really at a loss here. Uh, Death Wish? No. If I name the series, will you uh, then ask me to narrow it down? Or will you just say, gaff, nope? No, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll indicate if you get the series correct. Good, I wasn't sure how things worked up on that high horse of yours. <laughs> the, the, the view is good from this ivory tower. Uh, <laughs> uh, the main character fights assassins in a stable. He uses the horses to his advantage by placing the assassins behind the horse and then slapping the animal, making it kick the killers. Lots of blood. What the hell is going on in this movie? <laughs> um, hmm. I haven't seen this particular is one. It, is it the Assassin's Creed movie? Is, like, is, is, that, is it that series? No, no, it's not the Assassin's Creed series. Um, a girl. Apollo's Creed? <laughs> Would you say Apollo Creed? <laughs> Apollo's Creed. No. Uh, a girl is seen removing a toenail. Blood is seen accompanied by a crunching sound. That seems much less violent than the other things I've read. Uh, hey, do you think if uh, Carl Weathers uh, started a, a Creed cover band, he could call it Apollo Creed? Oh, that's interesting. Is it is it trademarked? Would, would Sylvester Stallone, are they good enough friends that Sylvester Stallone wouldn't make a, uh, you know, a big stink of that? I don't know. Or what if he made, like, all the music into, like, a big band styling and he called it Apollo's Creed? <laughs> like, he was, like, the, the, the leader of the band? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rocky Four. And they sang, uh, and they were like, um, oh, what's that one song? Uh, um... Oh, uh, oh, you're blowing it, Mark. I just heard the news <laughs> today. <laughs> Fucking Creed, man. Um, No, it's not the Rocky series. Um, oh, that would be Funny if some of this stuff happens in the Rocky series. Uh, let's see. A man gets branded on his back. He quickly shouts in pain. That's that's pretty normal. Well, I wouldn't expect him to slowly shout in pain. It right. just seems ridiculous. I don't know that I've seen this, Mark. This doesn't sound familiar at all. Let's see. I'm going to try frightening and intense scenes. Um, well, it says this movie is the most violent out of the three films. <laughs> oh, is it a Resident Evil movie? No. I think there's like six of those. Um. um Guessing oh. uh, this is a John Wick three. Yes, you got it. Okay. Yeah, that was sheer guess because of the three and all the assassins. I I have not seen that actually. Oh, you haven't seen that one yet? No, I I need to see John Wick two more. You know, so mm -hmm. so I won't be completely lost when I see John Wick three. Exactly. Yeah. But no, John Wick two is very weird. Like the parts I've seen are odd. Like I like action movies, but I don't like movies like the movie Ronin that are just like one hundred percent non, like literally nonstop action. Oh it's yeah, yes. I need a break. Yeah, my adrenaline system needs a break. I'll tell you, you know, um, not seeing earlier films or not being familiar enough with earlier films in the series has stopped me from watching a lot of films. Like I would have seen. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, but I was like, I am not watching uh, 2,048 films to catch up to that series. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the original uh, Blade Runner either. I saw the original Blade Runner. It's... It, okay, so I guess this is a controversial opinion, probably. I started to watch it, but it was kind of boring. Yeah, it's a very beautifully shot movie. It's like a master class in cinematography and an early... Uh, special effects, but it is a which is what I go to the movies for, right? Exactly, but it is a fucking boring movie. It's so dull, and like uh, Harrison Ford is so weird in the movie. Like the, his acting choices are really odd. It's just I don't know. It's a really See, weird I feel movie. that he only ever plays the angry guy. Yeah, exactly. Like I think I may have mentioned something before. I, I I have a dream of like a fake trailer with him and Denzel Washington called like Mad Guys. <laughs> and that's like it's just like you know because they always like have a scowl on their face Seriously. Both of them. 
because they're like buddy cops, but they're both the bad cop. Every every quote you can that any of you out there can think of from Har- of Harrison Ford movie is him shouting. Whether it's uh, you know, get off my plane, <laughs> or or uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Mel Gibson saying, "Give me back my kids." I can't think of another quote from him, unless you're a big Star I Wars just nerd. My wife. <laughs> right. This is a clear and present danger. <laughs> Everybody, run! I'm I'm a witness. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to work that in. Is it not like Amish people or something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big Harrison Ford fan. Honestly, I'm not really either. He seems like a very grumpy old man. He seems like he had an annoyed asshole. That's like even Indiana Jones. Like, oh look, I'm a history professor. Ooh, I'm gonna go get treasure, but don't worry, I'm gonna donate it to a museum. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> oh my god, Indiana Jones. You're free of snakes. Grow up. <laughs> There was a thing on the Weekly Planet. It was so funny because um, he they were talking about this comic book that they made of it was like a what if comic book basically of the Empire Strikes Back and Han Solo meets Yoda in this what if and he he goes to find Luke on Dagobah uh, where Yoda is and this snake comes up and he just grabs a snake and and the host of the podcast is like because uh, he says I'm not afraid of snakes uh, you know I'm not afraid of snakes because. Uh, I'm not Indiana Jones. We're different characters. And then he pauses and he goes, they're pretty much the same character. <laughs> they are largely the same character. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, like, I feel like for someone who just happens to like have a phobia of snakes, I've never seen a more snake running into motherfucker than Indiana Jones. Seriously. Everywhere he goes, there's just pits of snakes. Yeah. They're, why are there so many snakes in, in, in uh, Indiana or where the fuck he grew up? I mean, I, I know, like, in one of the movies, like, at the beginning of, like, uh, he's, like, on a train and he falls into a pit of snakes. Yeah. But then he just, like, throughout the rest of his life, he just keeps falling into pits of snakes. Why does he keep going to South America and other places that have a lot of snakes? And he's a snake magnet. Why are there so many snakes, like, in, in the Middle East, too? Oh, well, there should be a Indiana Jones movie where he goes to Australia <laughs> and meets those snakes. That's Honestly, that's are what... Are they doing another one? Yeah, I think they are. Indiana Jones five. Huh? Is I say what's the plot? But I mean, who cares? I mean, is is there any way that's going to be good? I doubt it. Is there any way it's going to be made? Because the filming's yeah, been delayed. True. Filming's been delayed because of the COVID nineteen stuff. And you know, if Harris, Harrison Ford might die in the interim, not of COVID nineteen, but of crashing his plane or you know, smoking too many bongs or whatever. Jeez, too many bongs? Is that how that works? <laughs> He's a big he's a big pot smoker and he flies planes and he's got an earring. That's all I know about him. And he's married to a skeleton. Oh Ooh. yeah, that's true. <laughs> he married he married a Halloween decoration. <laughs> <laughs> he married someone just waiting for there to be a live action <laughs> nightmare before Christmas. All right, exactly. I'm sure you're a very nice person, Clista Flocker. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know if they're married. I think they are. Yeah, they've been together for so long. I, you know, it's, really, it's like, hey, I'm married to Harrison Ford or dating him or whatever, so I don't need to work anymore. Yeah, that. So, her marrying Harrison Ford and Catherine Zeta Jones marrying Michael Douglas. Those are the two that I never got. I never well, got. half the time she's Zeta Jones. <laughs> exactly. She is bipolar. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I'm not Norm. Shout out to I'm not Norm, who's a frequent listener of the show uh, and a good friend of ours. He posted <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, it was it was uh, Norm McDonald's favorite comedian, and it was all all clips of him talking about Bob Hope and how Bob Hope's his favorite comedian. Oh, really? I, I thought he was just who David Letterman was. Well, he definitely loves Letterman, and you can see a lot of influence in Letterman. And at first, when he first said that, because he's talked about it a lot, Bob Hope being his favorite comedian. Um, when he first started saying it, I thought he was just trolling. But the more I hear him talk about it, I'm like, yeah, I, I can, and I can see it too. I can see a little bit of Bob Hope influence. I mean, a little bit in his comedy. Bob Hope was like a very how Norm always makes those like, golf references. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Norm's always talking about golf and the war. <laughs> 
You know what they should have called it? <laughs> what? The ninth hole. <laughs> I think that's how Norm knew that uh, that question about the bunker under um, the golf course on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that Regis talked yeah. him out of answer. Yeah, I just watched that the other day too. Fuck, that was that was the funniest episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire ever. And Norm is so fucking smart, man. Um, and Regis just <laughs> Regis just the whole time is just doubting him on every turn. Uh, I felt that Norman never watched this show, so he didn't realize that that was just what Regis does on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Regis, Regis is like, I, I don't know if he's just like a naturally nervous person or whatever. I don't know, but he he, he would do that a lot where, he, where he'd be like, now, now are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? I think that was, you know, part of the game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, he's been married to Joy Sensei since 1970. <laughs> Sensei. Yeah, uh S E N E S E Sen Senus Senus Joy oh, okay. Joy Senus. And she's a fucking liar. Her name's Bet. Bet Joy. I meant like uh I thought you meant like Master uh, Splinter. <laughs> he's had well, he's had a deeply uh closeted career with uh with Master Splinter. <laughs> Jeez. He said he was deeply closeted. <laughs> I think we should just make Norm Macdonald references the rest of, um, you know, what the fuck? What was Regis Philbin ever famous for, by the way? He was a singer. (laughs) Was he? Like in the 50s. He had like an album, but I don't know if he was like successful or anything. I know that he was like, I think he was Joey Bishop's sidekick on the Joey Bishop show. (laughs) Oh, really? For all you Rat Pack aficionados out there. (laughs) Yeah, I think it was like Joey Bishop's like second banana or whatever. I guess that's basically how he got famous, and then he was on the whatever show with Kathy Lee Gifford. The Regis and Kathy Lee Gifford show is what it was called. Oh yeah, you're right. That's right. Re- <laughs> Regis and Kathy <laughs> Lee. And then they replaced him with Michael Stray. <laughs> Who somehow uh was too good for that job. Hey, uh, Congratulations on spending an entire lifetime in, in entertainment and rising to this level uh, to have this job. Now we're going to replace you with a retired football player. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it used to be. Oh, I think I'm close to my Danny DeVito. I think I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> getting there. Nice. Uh, I just had hip surgery. I want to go to the, the corner. I, I I was I was listening to I was listening earlier to to him talk and I was I was getting close. It's it's it is it's yeah, it's yeah, pretty, pretty it's good. it's very New York. It's it's he gets New York. It gets a little high. It's yeah. I'll get it. It's, See what's weird is I feel that he does a, a Philadelphia like accent in uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, I need to watch more of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is a show I love, but apparently. Uh, my wife and I have way too many things to watch. Because <laughs> in addition yeah. to watching stuff that we want to watch, we also have to watch shit from 1995 <laughs> that sometimes sometimes is fun to, to relive, but sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass, too. Oh, I, I get that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to talk about that, but we'll talk about that later. Maybe some changes coming for you fucks. You ungrateful pieces of shit. Yeah, I've, I've had a, I've had a little bit to drink today. Actually, I found this really great. I braved the coronavirus to go out and find this uh, margarita mix. Sounds essential. Yeah, it's a it's a raspberry uh, margarita mix, and it is one of the best things I've ever had. I, I've become a girl drink drunk. <laughs> oh. They have a, like Costco has like a pre-made like margarita thing mm-hmm. too. That's pretty good. Um, I don't think it's like a seasonal thing there. I think, but yeah, I, I, I'm at the age and uh, I, I have a, a good enough track record that I could drink just like wine spritzers for the rest of my life and don't ever question my uh, drinking ability. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm I typically stick to whiskey and whiskey based uh, drinks, but I do like the occasional margarita or you know I I mean I don't care. Like sometimes I'll go out and I'll get fucking whatever i mean i've never i've never ordered an apple martini or anything like that but that's that's my wife's drink 
But I don't like beer. I like hard liquor. So and and uh, the occasional wine, but you know. So all kinds of alcohol is what you're saying. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Sometimes beer. Every once in a while. On a hot day, on a hot day, you're barbecuing. Sometimes there's nothing better. Yeah, I, 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 my non-drinking still is basically sticking. Like I, I don't think I've gotten, I've drank enough to the point of feeling affected by it. I just like still kind of like, eh, I, you know, I, I'm good after a couple, maybe like a six pack over a day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but it's just like I just lost a taste for it. Yeah, that happens. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this... I, I like to think that you just like have gone through like the entire production. Like there's like a uh, like a big like pitcher or two next to you with the margaritas, like you know, fully blended. Like you know, that's what like really was taking so long. You're just like blending up all the uh, you know fruits and uh, ices and stuff. Yeah, I lied. I didn't buy. You're, it from you're the laying store. out the umbrellas. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't buy it from the store. I made it from scratch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you'd rather think that you just like you're like oh I better just tell him I went out and get this <laughs> or like you put it up at like 5am I couldn't admit it but you found me out <laughs> uh, you know what I came across the other day I came up, like I think it came up on my timeline or something like that was the little bubbin friends <laughs> video oh, that, so that was really good I, I didn't come up, it didn't come across mine but I liked that one uh, I think that was my, my favorite one Andy Capper yeah, that's a good one. Oh, um, it's funny too because, uh, like, I got like an alert earlier today, and, I, and it was from like, um, like YouTube, like I don't know whatever it is, like uh, alerts, notifications. Mm-hmm. Alert sounds like way more jarring. So I guess I'll say I got a notification. Suddenly, I got an alert. <laughs> YouTube and, uh, had something uploaded, very important to tell me. Someone has uploaded a new video. <laughs> you must see it at once. Oh man! Yeah, so I saw that. I'm like, and it, 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 it was Heil. Hi, honey, I'm home. Yeah. But I was hoping when I saw it, I, at first I, I was hopeful and I thought that it was like a, an animation you had done about it. Oh, okay. Because, like, when I just really, like, when you do those, those are like the funniest fucking things. I love those. Like, the little bubble one, like you said, especially is hilarious. I'm going to do uh, some more of those now. That the, I would have, I had like two or three ideas for videos I wanted to do, but then the computer destroyed itself. So uh, I wasn't able to do them. I but didn't want to live anymore with those ideas on there. <laughs> exactly. But now that it's, uh, now that it's fixed, I'll be able to do it. You know what I didn't even plan, though? Is the fact that we did that Heil Honey I'm Home and a 420 was uh, Hitler's birthday? Yeah, you didn't plan for that one, did you? <laughs> that was it. It was sub- subconscious. <laughs> I think, uh, what was it, 419? That was Sunday. And that's, of course, uh, the uh, the Waco uh, incident, which my wife is watching a, a documentary mm-hmm. or docudrama about now. Yep. I feel like I've, I feel like I'm good on Waco. I've read enough about it and like watched enough videos and like all that crazy conspiracy stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I don't really need to see more. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fucking hell of a thing. Um, you but know, I'll tell you what. I'll watch uh, Timothy McVeigh all day, all day McVeigh. They call me. <laughs> you know what we're coming up on is, or actually, we just passed was the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah, for that was uh, the same day. Yeah, April nineteenth, yeah, nineteen ninety five. I remember that was so crazy. I remember that like I was uh, staying at a uh, friend's house. Uh, I'm not going to tell you uh, who it was exactly. Uh, you know, I don't want to be putting people's names out there, but mm. he wasn't quite sure where a punchline went. Oh, okay, so I know who it is. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was up there, and then, like, I went upstairs, like, I see the building is, like, on fire. I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell even happened there? It's just, like, it was so insane. It was, like, something you would never see before. It's, like, you, I hadn't seen, like, special effects that were more, like, jarring and disturbing than that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And to think that, you know, to think that you were staying at the guy's house, too. I mean, I don't want to put his name out there. I don't want to put uh, Tim's name out there, but he was, uh, you know, but to think you were staying at that guy's house, I mean, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah, it, was, cause it was weird, too, because the timing, it must have been like spring break or something. I don't know. I don't know what day of the week it was, but the fact that it's in like April, you know? Yeah, well, his door was always open. Remember when we went into uh, to his house and uh, told him, you know, uh, hey, hey, you're late for school. You got 
how to go to school and he tore out of the house uh you know like yeah this story is so ridiculous that i don't believe it and i witnessed it he uh he tore out of the house basically in shorts uh and and nothing else almost that like, were way too short yeah he i think he grabbed a shirt that he was trying to put on on the way because he lived somewhat close to the school so he took off I running get them from abercrombie and nuthuggers <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They were worse than uh, than Ryan's uh, uh, sweatpants. Yes. Um, but then he comes. Was so like we're just laughing our asses off, and then he comes back. I think we were actually staring at this bully for like thirty seconds because we thought he was like joking with us. <laughs> he comes walking back with this sheepish look on his face, and he goes, "Guys, it's uh, it's three p.m. It's Saturday, and it's the summer." <laughs> And we're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I think I said, I'm like, oh, 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 yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it was like July. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this dude was thinking, but uh, yeah, crazy. But he do he used to have night terrors, and I would go when we'd when we'd uh, have sleepovers, like uh, like little girls. We um, I'd go I'd go by his ear, and I'd just go bees. <laughs> It's the yes, I remember that actually. <laughs> and then he'd start like swatting. <laughs> hey, you know what? About you? you remind me, he really did have night terrors. He did. He had he had horrible night terrors. Remember one time he like uh, he like uh, stood up and like karate kicked like a fan, you know, like a, a standing like oscillating fan, and then just like sat right back down. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. My favorite story. <laughs> I I didn't witness this, but he he told us this story later. <laughs> he uh he woke up in the middle of the night. Apparently, he thought there were robbers in the house. He uh he started screaming to his mom, "Call the police! There's robbers in the house!" Ran over to the do- like ran like chasing them out the door or whatever. His mom, frightened, is call calls nine one one. He gets to the door. <laughs> There's no one there, obviously. He gets to the door and he just screams, "I'll get you!" <laughs> and then, and then, his, <laughs> and then his mom, realizing what happened, goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. My son was just having a nightmare." <laughs> It turns out his uh, mom was just having a, a train raid on her. Yeah, that's right. I'm just kidding. She was very nice, whatever her name was. Yeah. Sue, I think. I don't remember. Something. His dad was weird. <laughs> oh, his dad and his brother were, was quite odd, too. Yeah. His brother uh, would routinely like uh, take like cassettes home and like copy them and like just bring them back. Well, yeah. it sounds like it's like kind of like an innocent thing, but he had like maybe a thousand cassettes. So he's <laughs> seriously he consistently been buying like ten cassettes a week. Uh he was an so early like, Napster. He had ten more cassettes, and right. then just <laughs> he had a fucking Tower Records in his basement. <laughs> yes. Oh God, that family. Anyway, so uh, speaking of family. Uh, this week we're talking about the the finale Man's got game, <laughs> the finale of uh, Better Call Saul, which uh, you know features the Salamanca family. Has it not occurred to you yet that we didn't finish the Parents Guide game? <laughs> oh fuck, we did! <laughs> I was waiting for a break. I guess I should guess. <laughs> Is it um? Uh, ruthless people. <laughs> no. One of the characters briefly mentions his mother was "quote unquote" banging a milkman. You know, like having sex. Hmm. Throw mama from the train. No. Okay. <laughs> a nude woman is also seen swimming around a car underwater. Her buttocks can be briefly seen. Swimming around a... Did you say around a car underwater? Yeah. Huh. Matilda. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? That's a, it's a curious strategy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. A, ca- 
car under We see bones outside a cave where a giant resides. What the fuck? Bones outside a cave where a giant resides? Yeah, have you not heard that expression? <laughs> oh, that old chestnut. Yeah, that's almost a cliche at this point. Um, uh, what other... Let's see. It, it's going to be so funny when you probably like totally uh uh change this up on me um i don't think this is right because i don't think there's any like nudity kind of stuff in this movie but um big fish yes big fish is that what it is yeah yay (laughs) i knew it was gonna be a danny devito movie (laughs) i just so like you said i switch it I spent the whole I spent the whole like week studying Danny DeVito's filmography. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 probably didn't even get through all of it. To no no like he's been in a ton of movies, but I but luckily I've seen probably ninety percent of the movies that he's been in. Like I went through his filmography. Is that and really like, luckily though? <laughs> well, yeah, he's been in some uh, he's been in some unfortunate movies. He's been in some really good movies too. Yeah, yeah, he's he's good. I. I him, but yeah, he has been some bad movies like uh, Screwed with uh, Dave uh, Chappelle and Norm McDonald. Oh, yes, unfortunately, we should do that for a dumpster diving or like, uh, <laughs> we could like a uh, hmm, like a commentary dumpster diving type thing. Or oh, something. yeah, we could do that if we want to do that, that Netflix thing or whatever the Netflix and chill with your oh, friends. That's not what you meant. <laughs> That's what it is, right? Netflix and chill with your friends. It's like a mixture. Netflix party. It's a mixture between watching Netflix no. and chat roulette or whatever the fuck that's called. Is remember, that even around still? I don't. I don't think so. But do you remember that? Do you remember that there was a? I think you would know a website or whatever where basically it was just people masturbating with each other. It was just yes. Like just, are you gonna get a dude? You're gonna get a guy. It's. It really was like <laughs> Russian That's roulette. Basically what happened, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, chat roulette. Yeah, I never went on it, but I heard things. And then Craigslist too, right? Craigslist was. I'm not sure. I think Craigslist, like, I think they used to have like prostitutes on there, but I don't know that they do now. Um, I think that's what their thing was. But I, I don't even. There was something weird because, like, I think some guy like killed some people from Craigslist, and I think it was related to that. I'm not sure exactly what happened. There. Oh come on, <laughs> fucking one serial killer's got to ruin it for everyone else. Isn't that the truth? It's like hitchhiking. Can't do that anymore either. Couple serial yeah. killers got to ruin everything. <laughs> And then on hitchhiking, they get you both ways. I mean, the people you pick up are killing you, and then the people, uh, you know, who are picking people up are killing you. So, I mean, holy shit, it's like double. I mean, their their PR people really are doing a bad job. Absolutely. It used to be that, you know, you could be a middle-aged married dude driving down the road. You'd see, you know, some young uh, teenage girl trying to get to Los Angeles or whatever. You'd take her, you know, 25 miles down the road. She'd blow you. It'd be great fucking now serial killers just ruin it for everybody <laughs> jeez <laughs> there's a in the, in the worst stephen king uh novel which is road work um there's a uh I disagree really you, you like i like that one you, you like Bachman road work one? yeah i don't like what? it i don't like it very much With, without having read it i would have to say dream catcher is probably the worst <laughs> you're right <laughs> You're right, Dream Catcher is worse. I uh I actually what I meant was the worst Bachman book, but um Gotcha. But uh if, and it's not bad. It, uh, you you might be right on that. Roadwork's not bad, but there's a lot the there's a lot of really good right. Bachman books though. Right. Um but anyway, he in the, in that book he uh he picks up a uh some girl and she has sex. She actually I think he takes her home and has sex with her. I don't remember. I had the Bachman books at uh, at one point, and then I I lost my copy. And then, uh, as attested to what you said earlier, some one person uh, you know shoots up a school and uh, mm-hmm. has a, has that you know on his nightstand. And then Stephen King just bans the book outright. Yeah, I actually own a copy of Rage, just the book Rage. Um, and oh, and, nice. and I still have my copy of the Bachman books too. I think it's actually worth something now. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure I could find it. I mean, I'm sure I could overpay for it i don't care 
mm-hmm. about it that much. It's just like annoying that it's like, what what the fuck? I mean, come on. Yeah. Do you not think that it influenced some crazy person out there to fucking dress like a clown and kill? Seriously. Yeah, when all those uh, fucking, you know, don't you think that uh, the stand uh, influenced what's going on right now <laughs> with this coronavirus? I mean, come on. You're going to pull that off the shelves, too? Don't you think the dead zone uh, inspired Donald Trump to become president? It, it may have, yeah. Uh, you can't pull that one off the shelf either, though. You can't. Uh, yeah, I disliked it. You can't take away work from uh, what's his name? Uh, the Richard Bachman. <laughs> no, um, they did a they did a TV show and it starred Anthony Michael Hall. That's who it was. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, the Dead Zone. Can't take food out of that guy's mouth. He needs it. Yeah, that that's not on anymore, is it? No, no, it hasn't been on for you years. Know that stuff that's on USA doesn't really last long. I mean, I can't think of any like long lasting USA shows other than Silk Stockings. Oh God, yeah, Silk Stockings. Silk Stockings. Oh, what a show that was. I think we've talked about Silk Stockings before. I don't think I've ever actually watched much of it. Like, whenever I was on, I'm like, ah, this looks dumb. Um, But I I didn't really consistently have cable as a child, uh, as we all know. You know, um, USA, USA, the USA Network was... USA Today, you are going to (laughs) say? Yeah. Well, USA Today in many ways, too, but but the USA Network was Cinemax for basic cable. That was my understanding, and also Gilbert Gottfried was involved. Yeah, oh, for sure. Oh, God, Silk Stockings. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Better Call Saul. I don't remember what this episode was called. Oh, no, I lost it. It was uh, something unforgivable. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah. This uh, this was an interesting, a really, really, really good finale. I think I, I I really enjoyed it, and a lot going on in this finale. Yes, very much uh, stuff is going on in this. So, uh, what do you want to do first? You want to do you want to do the Lalo stuff first, or you want to do the Jimmy stuff first? I think it's probably best to split them up because they're kind of. Yeah, they don't really overlap a lot. Not really, no. Mike is kind of in both a little bit. Yeah. Um, It's really, honestly, it's harder. The best part about the show is it's harder to say what's more thrilling. You want to say the best for last, (laughs) super violent uh, gunfight. Right. And we have a a, a tense conversation about uh, destroying someone. Right. And it's all all done to the legal system. And, And this show is so good that it's hard to tell you what's what's more interesting i mean you'd think it'd be an easy answer like a, a gunfight but that's not necessarily the case yeah exactly uh i guess i guess i'll start with the lalo stuff because it's it's the simplest honestly um yeah. so lalo uh, has decided to go down to mexico as we learned in last episode he takes nacho with him uh basically he's just saying like hey you know nacho you're you're um you know, you're the man, you're you're coming up. Uh he's taken what Kim said to heart and he's basically like, Look, I need to I need to be able to trust somebody, and this is the guy that I trust. So he's gonna go meet Donnie Lado and uh <clears throat> and everything. So he takes him down there, he takes him to his house. Um yeah, on the mean in the meantime, we see a discussion with Mike and uh and Gus again. Again, mm-hmm. um Mike is appealing to Gus saying, Hey, you know, why don't we let this guy, you know, let him out? He's you know, he's done what we needed him to. Uh, but Gus is like, uh, no, they're probably taking him that far to promote him, uh, you know. So maybe we'll have use for him yet. So just Gus just has no, in- he clearly has no interest at all in uh, letting Nacho go under, yeah. from under his thumb. Yeah, and I, you know, I I felt bad for Nacho uh, for most of the series. This episode changes it a little bit, I guess. Um, but also, the thing you said last week uh, really stuck with me when you when you said, you know, that Gus brought up an interesting point about how. This guy's fucked over everyone he's ever worked for, <laughs> and you can't, uh, you know, you can't really treat that with kindness. So um, he really, you know, in some ways he's a sympathetic character because he really just wants out at this point. But he's also, you know, in his own way, he's also as ruthless as as a lot of these people are. Um, but yeah, so they go they go down to Lalo's place. Uh, Lalo, in typical Lalo fashion. <laughs> decides to roll up in a tinted window SUV so no one can see who it is 
so that his guards point uh, a gun in his face so that when he rolls down the window, he can just laugh with them. Like, that. only Lalo would think almost getting shot is the, the height of hilarity. Great. So they, they get in there. Nacho's clearly, uh, you know, not too happy with this situation. The gates close on him, and they're like, uh, yeah, you know, this this guy's fucking, uh, he's in for it now. He's 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 down here. Um, Lalo clearly, to me, has plans for Nacho to completely run everything up north in his stead. That he, oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, he says he, this is our guy up north. You know, he's going to, you know, carry all this stuff. So he's basically going to be the new Lalo. He's going to be, uh, or the new Hector, you know, whatever. He's going to be empowered to be their person in uh, New Mexico. Yeah, which is, you know, uh, as we all know from the, the series and Breaking Bad, the Salamancas are very tightly knit. You know, they're mm-hmm. very close, crazed family where, like, you know, there's a pretty strict hierarchy. So them letting an outsider, I mean, even though they are basically out of options at this point, I mean, the cousins, they can't, you know, run an empire like that. Right. Um, And, you know, Tuco's in jail for a bit more. So, I mean, still, that's, you know, that's a high high praise and honor from the Salamancas. Yeah, for sure. So he goes and meets Donny Lado. We get to see him again. Uh, we get to learn the name of that guy whose name I forgot, Bolsa, uh, the, uh, the guy that's He's associated with Gus in some weird way and also associated with the cartel. I don't know exactly. It, it seems like he kind of took the place of the uh, the guy they killed, uh, Gus's, um, you know, Gus's lover. Like he was, he became what Gus's lover was going to be as far as like the business end of things go, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure because Gus was a businessman, if you remember, because that's why Gus needs Walt, because Gus doesn't know the chemistry behind it. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's right. The the uh, the guy that got I, killed was the chemist, right? You're, yeah, you're talking about the bald guy, right? Yeah, Bol- Bolsa. Yeah, I, don't, I think he's just he's just another member of the cartel. I think they, they're all like, you know, beneath Don Eladio, But, you know, they are they are like I think he's just another person who's involved. Yeah. And he's like, seen- you know, another. Like, you know, there's like the Salamancas are like one of the members and like probably the Bolsas. And then, you know, there's some other guys. He seems to be the, the one that like kind of helps uh, Gus get his money and stuff across the border uh, so that Gus doesn't have to do it. So that Gus can can, uh, you know, maintain his his cover as like a, you know, legitimate businessman and everything. I wonder, I don't I don't remember, but do you remember uh, in the episode where uh, Gus's lover gets killed? Um, is is Bolsa the one who introduces him to Don Eladio, or he just kind of? Because I don't think he just like shows up or something. Oh, that's a good question. I think he, he definitely it is. seems to recognize. Like he seems to be one of the cartel members that recognize that Gus knows what he's doing. I mean, they don't mm-hmm. like him because he's not you know from Mexico or whatever. But some of them are just smart enough to be like, hey, this guy can make money. He makes more money than anyone else. Let's just let him go. Yeah, I think I think it might be Bolsa. Because I'm trying to remember when we see that scene, I know we focus on Hector a lot. Uh, Hector, you know, not being crippled. Because up to that point, that's all we've seen is him being in that wheelchair. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, like, focuses a lot on him. But he's already there, like, you know, by the pool waiting and everything. And I think Bolsa is the one that brings them in. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, I mean, it just seems like he, like, you know, he, he appreciates Gus more than the other ones do. Because, you know, mm-hmm. they don't like him for various reasons. You know, he's... You know, not Mexican. He's gay. He's uh, he has some weird connection to the Peruvian army. I think it's yeah. that. I don't know if they're ever going to go into that. We have one more season left. Right. I can't imagine there'll be another you know series in this that has these characters at least because I mean they're all aging. I mean we've seen that you know in respective you know like this we saw that in um, uh, El Camino. You know the yeah. actors look different. I mean that's just how it is. I mean you can't yeah. keep. I mean you can't have like you had a third series and like you know. It can't be before this because you know Jonathan Banks is like seventy, maybe. Right. Do you, would you watch? Would you watch? And he's a seventy-year-old who looks like he's seventy. Yeah, exactly. Would you watch a series that was like I don't want to call it the Young Adventures because that sounds like uh, you know, like the Young Adventures of Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah. Yep. But uh, would you watch like the Young Adventures of uh, Gustavo Fring in Peru? Um, but it's it's a different actor so like somebody much younger it'd be very hard to find an actor who could fill that role this kid yeah. is uh you know he's such a giancarlo esposito mm-hmm. is just such a great actor yeah that's the that's the the hard part about it if they could find someone 
that that would I, to me that would make that would make my whole decision. If they found someone that I watched and I was like, okay, I see it. It's not just a pale imitation of uh, you know Giancarlo Esposito's Gustavo Fring. It's you know this is somebody that's bringing something you know new and nuanced and and, and stuff. And and he's a good actor and he he encapsulates the the spirit of it without you know looking like an imitation. But that's I mean that's a tall order for anyone. You know, actually, I, I just realized uh, that I, I wouldn't want to see that at all. In okay. fact, now that I think about it, and this, it's hard to say this because I, I love the actress so much. I really kind of wish Gus wasn't in uh, Better Call Saul as much as he is. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like the more you see, I mean, he's like this chilling, you know, like terrifying character. And the more you see of him and the more you see his motivation and his backstory, it's like, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Hannibal series by Thomas Harrison, you know, uh, The mm-hmm. Sound the yeah. lamb or dragon that yep but at a certain point i just had to stop because like there's like making a character like two he's just not even a, a villain at, the, at a certain point it's like oh well see i mean his lover was killed and you know he was always treated poorly mm-hmm. i mean I, I, I mean just just i don't need him to be a sympathetic character so the less i know about him and the less they bring the, the more mystery there is to a villain often the better a villain is yeah to appeal to our star wars fans it's the anakin skywalker syndrome where it's like Darth Vader is a good villain when he's behind a mask and you barely know anything about his backstory or whatever. But when you see him as a whiny fucking little kid and then, uh, you know, uh, doing, uh, t- I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. You know, yeah, that, that kind of ruins the mystique of your villain. <laughs> Hard to look at him the same way when you know that he was a dumbass that tried to jump over somebody on a hill and got his legs cut off. Oh, uh, but yeah. So, um, anyway, so, uh, Nacho's down there. He meets, uh, Danny Ladio. Uh, he, he seems to impress him. His plan is to turn the biker gangs against each other, have them kill each other, pick them off one by one as they're weakened and then take over their territory, which is, I mean, not, not a bad plan. And what's funny is that uh, when he first meets him, he goes, Oh, you're for the Tuco. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you can tell even he like knows that like Tuco amongst even the Salamancas is like you know yeah. a bad apple. Everyone knows that Tuco's fucking crazy. And he's like, "Are you crazy?" He's like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, are you insane too? <laughs> well, I, I, something I found interesting that I noticed. Um, it's just kind of. I wonder if it's like a social custom thing. See, I thought that at least like you know if this took place in America, like the subordinate would be the ones pouring the drinks. Mm-hmm. But both Don Eladio and. Uh, and Lalo, uh, they're the ones pouring the drinks out later, you know, for Nacho. That's true. It's just weird. Is that a custom thing? I, 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 that's just curious to me. I don't know. That's that's interesting. My wife has been to Mexico uh, on uh, as part of a school trip uh, a long time ago. Uh, like she spent uh, a couple months down there, I think, living with a, a family. So she might know, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure. That is interest. That's a interesting observation. And what if by living with a family, like she like hid in the walls for weeks? <laughs> <laughs> she was running away from the Irish mobs, <laughs> <laughs> or Scottish. She has Scottish heritage. That's what it is. <laughs> oh my god! And you know they were always found the 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 the, uh, the roving gangs that were looking for the uh, the Scottish. The, the Scottish were always found in the walls because uh, you'd hear the bagpipes. <laughs> They come into the house. Any Scottish in here? Right. Cool it with the bagpipes, guys. And you see red tufts of hair just <laughs> sticking through the uh, drywall. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so uh, um, so Nacho uh, is, you know, has no cell phone service. Uh, somehow, I don't know exactly how they do this, but somehow they're able to I guess maybe if they know his, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on how they uh, cellular technology of of what is approximately, I guess, ten or eleven years ago now. Um, More than that, I mean, Breaking Bad was what 2005. Yeah, you might be right. 2000. This is about probably about five years before that, so maybe 2000. Oh, maybe we'll have a curious episode in a year or so. <laughs> That would be 
the worst. I mean, it would be the best for a comedy bit, but it'd be the worst yeah. if you just see like Mike, like Mike and Nacho or Mike and Saul or whatever are standing in front of a TV and they see the second plane going to the World Trade Center and they turn and look at each other and then the camera just cuts to Gus just like sitting at his desk, you know, being all calm and everything, uh, you know, because he's the one that planned it. Like, <laughs> Because that would take him. That would take him to like the you know like uh, the cartoonish, ca- yeah, cartoonish villain level. Exactly. So even better, you'll you'll just see a clip like uh, you know on, on the next episode. You just see uh, you just see a uh, saw on the phone going. So you're, sorry, I completely forgot the guy's name. We ruined it. So you're telling me Howard's gonna be on one of these planes? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You but, see him, like, calling flight schools. But you don't know which one. It could be <laughs> one of four planes. Oh. Fucking crash them all. All right. It's official. Podcast over. <laughs> Holy <that's> shit. <laughs> oh, God. So never... like, that, that's when you realize that no one could, could, could tell Vince to go get no one. Oh, like, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Oh, never forget. Never forget, guys. And he uh, hires a guy to be Osama Bin Laden. Brilliant. <laughs> How uncomfortable would that be? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh. I, asked, uh, I asked someone uh, who shall rename nameless on 9 11 one day. Uh, one day, one, you know, one of the anniversaries, they go, Hey, do you remember? And they go, What? I go, Oh, you never forget. <laughs> You said on Facebook you'd never forget, you fucking liar. There were five uh, American flag blings on your MySpace page that day. Exactly. Ugh. Are you telling me you just put them up there for no reason? Oh, man. You said thoughts and prayers. Both. Did you even mean that? And then that? separately. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Which one is worse? Like, if you only send thoughts or if you only send prayers? <laughs> I feel that you do. If you're gonna, if if they have any value, it's is a package deal. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You, what is sending thoughts to me? You're just thinking about like, oh man, I hope that goes well. Next time there's a tragedy, I'm just gonna post thoughts and see what people say. Oh. <laughs> Orlando. Dot. 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 Thoughts. Hey, one, uh, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, so anyway, um, they they are able to get th- they're able to get through to Nacho uh, through his cell phone, and they say, "Look, um, <laughs> they said, look, Nachi, uh, there's a gate, uh, three a.m. Open it. We're gonna kill this fucker." Uh, and then they hang up. <laughs> and while Nacho says, "Hey, there's a bunch of like you know regular people here. Like there's an old couple and stuff. They haven't done anything. You're not gonna kill them, right?" And they're like, uh, "Not answering that." And they just hang up the phone. That's word for word how it was. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you know, you think like not. I, I'm thinking like Nacho's not going to do it. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking Nacho was just going to go to, like he was going to somehow wait until it was about to happen and then tip him off somehow and then basically just explain it by saying like, oh, I heard you know this or I heard that or whatever. Uh, but no, he just he goes out there and Lalo is drinking, I think whiskey. You know to. Uh, is it whiskey or tequila? I can't remember. I think it's tequila, but that might just be racism. <laughs> I think they're drinking. I think he's drinking tequila at first, and yeah, then... they are. I think they're drinking like a respato, uh, or what is it? Is it... Yeah, they're drinking like a respato. You know, they're drinking like tequila. I think. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Isn't is there a bottle of Jack Daniels in there? I can't remember what it is exactly. And whatever they're drinking, like nachos, like oh, uh, what, what about the good stuff? Yeah, which you know obviously means tequila because you know. In Mexico, tequila is the drink. Yeah. I mean, let's let's be honest here. So he tries to he try like because he's he wants to get he wants to get it's a it's a fucking plot point in this series, right? And also in a Breaking Bad, it is really. But he wants to get Lalo away from uh, away from there. So Lalo tells him, you know where it is. He goes to the bar in the kitchen. He sets a pan of oil uh, to heat on high heat on the stove so that it'll you know cause some smoke and everything. And he comes back with the the stuff. He pours the drink, or Lalo pours the drinks, actually, like you said. Um, 
he uh, and they they start drinking. And then Lalo's like, "Oh, you fucking asshole!" There's this kid who will never get a backstory on, apparently. But there's this kid that Lalo apparently blames everything on. I don't know if it's like his little brother <laughs> or I think he's like the newest guard or something. Yeah, he's like uh, he comes there and he sees this pan of oil just burning on the fire, and he's like, "Oh, you're l- using this to light your cigarettes or whatever." Yes, which is a weird idea. <laughs> He's like, "Why are you lying to me? You're always lying, you asshole." And then he sees um, the uh, the assassins sneaking up, and he yeah, uses. We did see Nacho, you know, go ahead and let them in. And there's at least four of them, and they're dressed all in black, you know, mm-hmm. with like uh, automatic weaponry. They're supposed to be the top men, according to Gus. Did they seem like the yeah, top because, men to you? <laughs> because obviously, Gus had a. Uh, Hired them, and he even says, you know, again, oh, that's good use for Nacho. We'll, we'll have him let the assassins in, you mm-hmm. know, because they're, you know, I don't know. I assume it's the assassins who actually call him. Yeah, it's just a very bad phone reception in uh, Mex- in Mexico around that time. Right, yeah. Uh, well, it was, yeah, so, so it was all the Scottish people hiding in the walls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the um, bagpipes were at a frequency that the uh, radio signals uh, just happened to be right next Exactly. To. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so uh, so like uh, you know, like he just Lalo, he's like a superhero, and his power is he has like the most luck ever. Of <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, that's like also kind of getting to the point of almost being ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Lalo happens to see this guy, and he like his uh, person he's berating is in front of him, so you know he dodges, and that person gets you know shot instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, he grabs a pan of oil, throws in a guy's face, uh, and then I think he grabs another guy's gun and he's just shooting. A, he shoots his way out of this. Right. He runs up to uh, his bathroom, and uh, apparently, this is actually how um, how El Chapo actually had a tunnel. Uh, but he lifts up his hot tub, and there's like a really long tunnel underneath it. Right. So it's like really, and it was, I felt claustrophobic. It was just like so small, but also curiously, it was very well lit. <laughs> like, like they really experienced. That experience. <laughs> Like, you're gonna, like, there's somebody down there, like, spinning, like, you know, oh, I gotta wear up this fucking tunnel. I'll be back in a couple of weeks, I guess. <laughs> it really was very re- well lit. Uh, real quick, we've got a we got a special guest on the podcast. It's Ben Cole. How you doing, Ben? Hey, pretty good. How are you guys? <laughs> what? He, That's weird. He called me during the middle of the recording, so I decided to just answer the phone. And, and uh, like I told you before, this... Uh, this roadcaster, thanks Road, by the way, for sending us a free roadcaster. Um, but this uh, this roadcaster that we have automatically just uh, hooks to Bluetooth to my phone. So uh, I was like, yeah, we might as well put him on the show. Ben, we're talking about the uh, final episode of Better Call Saul. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you don't watch Better Call Saul. No, never even heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of uh, Ben's policy? If uh, Kiefer Sutherland's on it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Is it you guys want to talk about the Lost Boys? <laughs> oh my god! Who's oh. up for some Flatliners trivia? Yep, exactly. Oh, unless it's, unless it's twenty-four and I or eye for an eye, I really have nothing to add. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We uh we we can talk about the uh, the first half of a few good men if you want. <laughs> yeah. Second half I tune out though. Fuck this movie. <laughs> oh man, Kiefer Sutherland. Ben met him once, didn't you? Yeah, I did at Hard Rock. Oh, what a what a guy! What a, I've read some stories. Tell about the story, him. Ben. <laughs> It is kind of weird because he you played that one up. He very con- all throughout the nineties. He very consistently played bad guys, and all of a sudden he's the all American hero of twenty four. Oh, do you have a, a theory on this? Hello. Do you have a, a theory on this, Ben? Because he, as far as I'm concerned, he's uh, his first couple movies of the nineties are Young Guns and uh, is he in Young Guns too? Uh, of course, yeah, he's in Young Guns too. I don't remember if he. I don't remember if he died. He might. He might be one of the Young Guns. He was Doc. He was Doc Holliday, right? In Young Guns. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So he is in uh, Young Guns too, which I feel is year ninety one. Young Guns too. Let so me. So you say I'll he just plays you. villains after this? Young Guns too. I'll tell you when it was. <laughs> Young Guns too, nineteen ninety. Very close, Mike. Boom. 
Ah, uh, the cast. Yeah, according to Mark, his character at a time to kill wasn't a villain at all. <laughs> yep, that's how I feel. <laughs> he was just standing up for. Uh, Man, for... Are you there? Oh, yeah, you... I'm there. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, apparently I the. Want, I want to hear. The, apparently, the only difference in Young Guns One and Young Guns Two is no Charlie Sheen in Young Guns Two. Spoiler: He died in Young Guns One. <laughs> I was trying not to. I uh, never I thought they, that I young believe guns they three. added uh, Christian Slater. Christian Slater, yeah, Christian Slater's in it, yeah. Dave Rudabaugh. Of course. Yeah, of course. Did he well, play uh, Pat Garrett? No, William Peterson was Pat Garrett. What the CSI guy? Yes. <laughs> That's correct, serious? yes. Oh my god, I didn't know you'd been around for that long. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey uh, Ben, do you have a do you have a theory on uh Kiefer Sutherland during the nineties? Uh he played a really good bad guy. Um you would think he kinda would have gotten tight cast. I'm surprised he was able to break out of that and you know, play a role like Jack Bauer so well. Let me ask you a question, Ben. If they had made 24 uh, 10 years earlier, do you think it would have been a success? <laughs> successful? No. Uh, th- there was actually a YouTube video that kind of joked around about that because uh, 24 uh, was so big on technology. Right. So th- they did a joke video where uh, they said this is what a 24 uh episode would look like in 1994 and Jack had to like keep running to the payphone to get information and stuff like that when <laughs> you know in the in the actual show he would get stuff on his uh, cell phone and stuff like that and it was it was pretty funny this beep says 911 <laughs> <laughs> that means the president's in trouble in 1994 it couldn't have been a black president though it would have had to have been I don't know <laughs> The first non... I, I wasn't even big on that part of it in 2001, so... Right. <laughs> According to Ben, that was the biggest so, yeah, I... that year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Ben, you missed our 9-11 discussion. We mentioned 9-11 at least once every podcast. We don't mean to. <laughs> we just never want to forget. Ben, do you think... If someone said, you know how people say thoughts and prayers. If someone just said thoughts or someone just said prayers, d- would either of those make sense? All by themselves? Yeah, that's funny. I never thought of it that way. But yeah, it's just, it, it doesn't really mean anything. They're a package deal, thoughts and prayers. They have to but come together. Combining them makes even less sense because they're like, kind of like against each other. They're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point <laughs> I'm just saying because uh, I mean if you're talking about like road prayers They're just memorization That's not thinking it's just repeating Right <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mark I think or, I mean no. Bill Mar- I don't know why I just called you by My uh, name <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but Mike I think uh, Thomas Aquinas Wants to talk to you <laughs> No, get a shovel. Uh, <laughs> I thought Bill Maher had a funny joke once. He goes, uh, "Just once, you know, though." I got it. The prayer. <laughs> we were all over that one. Yep. <laughs> Mike he's, and I. He's like the chance of the prayer working. Yeah. He goes. I mean, come on, prayer. He's like that's like wishing upon a star. Well, you know, it's. Uh, it's He's got a lot of opinions. Depend on, depending on your beliefs. He also thinks that uh he you know, the uh the comic book nerds got really upset at him because he uh he said when Stan Lee what? died. Yeah, when Stan Lee died, they he said that uh basically he said that comic books are for kids and they're not literature and you should grow up, basically, is what he said. I think is uh Norma Gallagher Comics? What are you talking about, lady? I don't read comics. <laughs> comics are for kids. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean, like fucking? <laughs> <laughs> or as a, uh, or as Norm Macdonald uh, once said, uh, can you believe that uh, Bill Maher is just giving away all the answers for free every week on TV? <laughs> I 
yeah. <laughs> oh God, Bill Maher. Did you, did you guys see that uh, they were thinking about doing Mueller at the zoo? Yeah, I I saw that, and then uh, but we saw Mike and I saw uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and we <laughs> we did. Oh my God, it was so bad. We did an episode on it. Holy fuck. I, I don't want them to make a mall rats too. Now I want my memories of mall rats. Just be what they are. Mark said it was worse than a Daniel right. Kroll video. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Oh God. Uh, it was, it was so bad. I think this is what Hitler meant by the final solution. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I love the first one so much that I'd like to think they could make a good sequel, but the actors would be so old. I like Kevin Smith movies, like, you know, the early movies a lot. Ten years uh, going before. Yeah, exactly. Or more, or more at this point. But I uh, but I just, I think, I, I think it's just over. I think the world, I think the world of movie making has passed him by. He seems to do well when he's directing uh, like an episode of like one of those CW shows, um, you know, whatever it is, uh, the flash or superwoman or, or something. Yeah. When he directs like an episode of one of those, he seems to do well. Cause he's a good, like that. He's a perfect television director. He can shoot quick. He can shoot cheap. He can shoot efficient. That's what he's good at. And that's what television is. So he's a really good television director. I, I just, his, the writing is the writing is the part that's, that's hurt him the most. It's just become so self-indulgent to like the point where I don't even think he's aware of a way to do a movie that doesn't involve the Askewiverse. Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if they, I don't know if they, and that's like one. dated, you know, it's very, it's like 25 years old or more at this point. It's like, yeah, I, I understand these characters. Oh, look, they're screwing up. Again. Yeah. That guy says, fuck a lot. Hold on. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me mark this down. <laughs> Uh, I remember the first time I, I saw know, but... I saw um, Clerks, and it was like it was like a breath of fresh air. It was I had never seen anything like it, and it was so sharp and witty and different. Uh, and then I mean, it's just like I said, it, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but it's just it's not there anymore. And I don't know if it's the passion's not there, or if the talent's just not there anymore, or what. But it's just I not mean, there. I... Honestly, uh, I don't. Would you even say he has like a master? Was he? Did he make a masterpiece at some point? And then I think Ben was going to say something too. Actually, yeah. Ben, go, do you want to say your thing first? Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Well, I was going to say this isn't a perfect comparison, but I sort of felt the it same way be. as you did for the clerk uh, uh, when I first saw Mallrats. Right. It, again, not a per, not, not a perfect comparison, but it was. Almost similar to when I saw uh, Pulp Fiction, but for the first time, it was like, oh, my God, this dialogue is so amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was just kind of blown away by it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's same same year, too. The, both those came out in 1994. And I think the comparisons between Tarantino and and Kevin Smith there, I think that's like spot on. Uh Tarantino. I think that that's about the uh, the only other comparison too. They both debuted in 1994. <laughs> but like when when they first came, when they first started out, it was almost like the David Mamet school of um, you know like really stylized dialogue. So like Kevin Smith's was very yeah, like a, like a noir film or something like that, very snappy. Exactly. Yeah. Kevin Smith was like, you know, more like more of the comedic sensibilities and like everyday minutia. And uh, Tarantino was like, you know, pop culture and everyday minutia, but mixed with like ultra violence instead of comedy. One went one way and <laughs> the other one went the other way, unfortunately, um, you know, because Tarantino continued to kind of evolve. And even he sometimes, though, will slip into almost self parody uh you know you know at, as sorts but he's he's still probably one of the best filmmakers out there working today you know what's weird about Tarantino though i don't like most A of lot his of movies stuff. it's just the it, it, yeah it's just that the ones he has made that are good are so fucking good like reservoir dogs and Pulp fiction are just mm -hmm. amazing Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I like most of the and movies. I still, I, I still haven't seen the Hard Eight. The Hateful Eight. 
But yes, I haven't seen the Hateful Eight because I don't have a spare five hours. The hard, the hard eight is what Quentin Tarantino gets every time he sees uh, someone's feet. Yeah, he's looking at a. Uh, <laughs> and Mark, I remember us really disagreeing. And Mark, I remember us really disagreeing on this, but I wasn't a fan of Inglorious Bastards, and I know you like loved it. Oh, get yeah, you're Ben. Yeah, Inglorious Bastards is probably my favorite Tarantino movie, actually. Yeah, you're- I think *Inglorious Bastards* has maybe two of the best scenes ever filmed in any movie ever. Yeah, in one movie, and there's even a third one that's quite the contender. The very opening scene is one of the best openings I've ever seen. I mm-hmm. mean, I, another you know obvious classic Tarantino opening scene is the one for *Pulp Fiction* that really quickly immerses you in the character. Yep. Same thing in *Inglorious Bastards*, and then the scene in the underground bar. All yep. that is perfect. That is a perfect scene. Yeah, I I'll love just, that I'll scene just, too. Turn that movie out and just watch that scene sometimes. It's so good. You don't even need to know anything else about the movie. It's- I agree with you on the opening scene. I remember uh, I thought, oh my God, am I going to love this movie when I saw the opening scene? Because that was, that was pretty amazing. Tarantino knows exactly how to ratchet tension in a scene uh, in a very quiet way. And then he knows... He knows he knows exactly how long each shot should be. He knows exactly where to make his edits. I mean, you know, Tarantino is obviously a student of film, but just a master when it comes to putting together a scene. He's very good at putting together a scene. That's the side of of Tarantino that, that Kevin Smith honestly never really had. Is Tarantino's a very talented visual filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And he it, like uh Kevin Smith, like he'll either he just does nothing with the camera, or he'll just add something. It just does nothing for the shot. It doesn't. His camera like never adds anything. Like mm-hmm. his directing the actors up. I don't know. I mean, his actors are mostly his friends. I mean, are you gonna be you know super honest with your friends for years? Like, oh, you need to do this. I mean, are, are they playing different characters? No, they're they're playing themselves mostly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Quentin Tarantino, like, he had an impressive, you know, debut with Reservoir Dogs, which admittedly steals a lot from a lot of other movies, like mm-hmm. the scenes, like, directly, like, you know, call them homages, but but his, it, it just became better and better, both the writing and the filmmaking, and, mm-hmm. you know, just the whole things were just, they kept getting better quality-wise. Yeah, for sure, I agree. But you can say each movie, I mean, they're not necessarily better movies, like, I, I do like Inglourious bastards a lot but i feel it's very long i mean it is obviously probably like 40 minutes worth of film i mean they're they're not necessary but i mean with everything else being so you know relatively dull it just kind of like makes it it's just too long of a movie and plus do i really need to see fucking mike myers on screen for like 10 minutes <laughs> right doing his best uh you know uh english fop impersonation but if you're not if you're not sitting next to danny carvey i, I don't need to see him mike myers mm-hmm. One of the one of the things that I love about the fact that Quentin Tarantino exists, though, is uh, the N word. No, it's um, it's the fact that uh, most movies nowadays are like a big superhero movie or a Star Wars movie or something like that. It's nice to have a, a filmmaker around that makes movies that you know. I mean, it's not like they are huge blockbusters, but they make enough money that they they continue to get wide releases and they're not based on you know other properties they're they're originally written scripts they're yeah. cleverly they're written intelli- scripts they're intelligent movies too they're yeah. not like you know they're not like a rom-com where like oh my god they they broke up oh they got together at the end you know i mean there's like <laughs> right. some genuine twists and turns going throughout the movies there's weird moments of comedy sprinkled in like like in uh Oh, what's that movie with Jamie Foxx? That one. I didn't care for that one that much. Django Unchained. Like, yeah, there was like comedy. There, there's mm-hmm. comedic scenes and they're at a clan rally. That's just very <laughs> difficult to pull off. Yeah, it's weird. I think Kevin Smith had the same kind of... Isn't there like a clan involved in one of those movies? In Jay and oh. Silent Bob Reboot. We just yeah, watched and it's, it. And it's not funny. And that movie's a comedy. No, it's not funny at all. And they, they interrupt a clan rally. And all he Ben, all he does is copy the... The scene from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Like almost word for word. <laughs> the, the Alec Baldwin scene. He even says to these clan people that he's come from Mitch and Murray. And they're like, who? What? Because it's in this movie. I guess we're not big fans of uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Ro- Glenn Ross and the clan. No, apparently not. Do you, you know that scene, Ben, uh, from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? Uh, the Alec Baldwin uh, coffees for closers. 
Uh, no, Kiefer Sutherland was in it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he should just start, start photoshopping uh, Kiefer Sutherland and stuff. Or we'll just flat out lie to bit. Like, oh, he's in the very last scene, but it makes the whole movie. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland's in the background here. He's he's by uh, cr- the crafts table. <laughs> just put a Kiefer Sutherland with uh, some sunglasses and- <laughs> A pistol on his hip. And Ben's interested. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on YouTube. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit movie movie scenes in famous movie scenes to just include uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Hey Ben, uh, what's the uh, most obscure fact you know about Kiefer Sutherland? Is it that he's super uh, short? Uh, he's got a big head. Yeah, I don't know if I know an obscure fact about Kiefer Sutherland, and I've met him. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I know he's a drinker. I don't know if that's obscure, though. I think everybody knows that. That's, I think that's pretty well known. I think we all know he's a drinker. Here, another obscure fact, like the fact that he's a drinker, is that his dad is uh, is Donaldson. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Did you uh, did you ask him if he uh, ever dated Demi Moore? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Did well, you I get the short. A, I, I got to get a follow up that later. question. <laughs> Oh, all right, so Mike. Back to Tarantino. How do you guys? Back to Tarantino. How do you guys feel about the Kill Bill movies? I like the first one a lot. Mm-hmm. The second one I didn't like as much. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. Uh, like I'm not the second one. The second one was just a, a weird. He was just throwing a lot of ideas in there at once. But the second one, it's like, oh, let's just have like, let's just like, you know, go to martial art movies now. It's like fucking stay tuned, you know, with the different genres. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not. Uh... See, that's what I really hate when his movies try and blend too many genres. Like Django and Chain was really good as a western, but then it's like a like a black exploitation movie for like, the last third, and it really ruins. Yeah, I agree for sure. A hundred percent ruins that movie. But I, I, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of martial arts movies in in general anyway. So, um... yeah, I think I think we all knew that. Mark. <laughs> Let's just say yellow is not my favorite color. So. Uh... Jeez. <laughs> to, no, is uh, attacking your masculinity, not your uh, <laughs> right? racism. To all my, to all our Asian listeners out there, you know, obviously that's a joke. Um, Both of you. My, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, anyway, so, um, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of them, you know. Anyway, so Kill Bill is just kind of not. I, the first one I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I'm also not a big. Uh, Daryl Hannah fan to be Daryl or um, or uh, what's her name Uma Thurman either. Uh, I think Uma Thurman is good in certain stuff, but I'm not a huge fan. I think Vivica A. Fox is who plays Black Mamba now. That I think that's about right. It. Yes, that's. I was thinking about it the other day because we were talking about that, uh, and uh, I saw a picture of Gabrielle Union because that's like you know that's the the woman that's uh, dating Dwayne Wade or, or she's married to Dwayne Wade or whatever. Oh, that was. Yeah, and when I saw a picture of Gabrielle Union, I was like Vivica A. Fox. That's who it is. I don't know why that made me think oh, of that's it, weird. but it just I don't know. It just reminded me of the conversation we had, and I was like, oh, it's Vivica A. Fox. That's who it was. Yeah, she's a good. Is man, uh, Vivica A. Fox married to uh, another person the Pistons should have drafted? <laughs> Actually, unfortunately, she's married to Darko Milicic. <laughs> the thing is, though, it's almost I'm like sorry, Rocky One and Two, where the second kill, the second kill, Bill isn't even really its own movie. It's just one long movie just split up. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of true. Hey Ben, yeah. do you think uh, Carl Weathers would uh, be a good singer? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's black. <laughs> Mark and I were talking about this earlier too. Wow, yeah we uh, we wanted uh, we wanted him to start a band, uh, the uh, Apollo Creed or Apollo's Creed. She's uh, so pa- uh... apparently Vivica Fox is was in in December nineteen ninety eight. She married singer Christopher Six Nine Harvest. The couple divorced in 2002. She dated rapper 50 Cent in 2003. In 2011, Fox and club promoter Oscar Slim White broke their 10-month engagement. Fox has stated she... Damn it! (laughs) Fox has stated that she regrets that she did not have children and that 
it is her biggest regret in life. Uh, do you think, Ben, follow, is that from follow a up question. Note? Jesus Christ, don't say that. <laughs> ben, follow up question. Is that Christina's b- biggest regret in life? Jeez. <laughs> Keep in mind What's that their biggest regret in life? keep in mind that Vivica F- A Fox is uh, is uh, fifty five, so she obviously can't have kids anymore. She stated that her biggest regret in life is not having kids. Oh no, uh, I don't think she's <laughs> regret that. <laughs> yeah, she's. She, I tell her not to. She, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> As you bring her a box. Oh, let's just say there's been a lot of stair pushing uh, at the uh, the cold house. <laughs> they can't afford those fancy uh, birth control methods, Mike. Jeez. Ah, uh, like pulling out. Um. So, <laughs> uh, let, let's see. Um. Uh, I don't know. Mike, do you want to try to uh, here, Ben? Just play along with us as we as we finish Better Call Saul real quick. <laughs> oh my God, we're, we're not even halfway through. So, so Ben, um, what happens in this show is that uh, Nacho lets the assassins in, uh, and like Mike was saying, <laughs> in conclusion, we liked it. <laughs> as as Mike was saying, Lalo uh, just keeps getting lucky, luckier and luckier, uh, you know, every time. These assassins seem incredibly stupid. He kills them fairly easily, and then he looks over and he sees that uh, that Nacho has left the seat where they were drinking. And so, Mike, I mean, it's pretty obvious. That, been. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that they uh, that he knows now that Nacho has um, yeah been involved. So, sure. so this is my question. I felt like he really undersold that. That scene was so. So dramatic and like tense, it was amazing. But again, Lalo is just like, yeah, okay, I'll track back to the house. He shoots the guy. He hit the guy has a machine gun and he machine guns three guys like down a tunnel. Mm-hmm. That's in- ridiculous, right? Well, there's, there's enough lighting, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like Kevin Smith's uh, fucking texting. You know, <laughs> it's that obvious. <laughs> we get it. You're in a tunnel. But uh, but yeah. So what's weird is when we first meet Saul in Breaking Bad. Uh, you know, he he thinks that that Jesse and Walt have been sent by Lalo. So the implications is that Lalo is still alive, which obviously he is right now. And he blames everything on Nacho. I think I think Lalo is going to kill Nacho next season. I mean, that's my guess. See, I'm not sure. My my I'm, my thought is that Nacho is going to kill him like right away. It's possible. That's possible too. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't know about Nacho's article in like that shittily, but I mean, he's kind of had a shitty life so far. Yes, yes. But I don't want to. I don't want to. And, uh, and then Lalo's going to rape his father in front of him. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Papa! I told you to leave. Um. You said to come. <laughs> So, Mike, I've, I've listened to some of your guys' podcasts. Uh, you think Breaking Bad is the best show ever? Uh, either that or The Wire. But I think, I mean, I, yeah, honestly, the other one. I couldn't. What? Yeah, that was the other one you were really raving <laughs> about. I couldn't uh, remember the name off the top of my head. But, yeah, you were saying Breaking Bad and The Wire are like the best shows you've ever seen. Yeah, Better Call Saul is actually on par with Breaking Bad. I would say at this point, it's, sure. it's very, very good as well. And um, and that that if you start watching that, depending on how quickly you watch it, like you'll if you watch that, you could then watch Breaking Bad after it. It kind of might make sense chronologically. That's true. Although the although they're older, it's like oh, I got younger. I, I guess maybe <laughs> plastic surgery. Everyone got Botox treatment before. Because <laughs> what's ridiculous to me is I think. Um, Saul is like I don't know how old he's supposed to be, but he's like relatively fresh out of law school, and he's he's like fifty years old, six years old. <laughs> yes, it's just one of those things we don't really talk about. Because yeah, he... and, and then Rhea Seahorn looks pretty young. She's like what in her thirties, maybe. 20s? Probably, yeah. I would say her early thirties, probably. But a woman never tells. Uh, Mike or Ben, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? No, I, I've never watched it. And a lot of people told me to over the years, and I just never did. You have Netflix, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> what the fuck was that pronunciation? <laughs> did you did you get? <laughs> Marty, do you have a television? <laughs> so. Are you aware how you said that word? Yeah, yeah, I did it on okay. purpose. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, you should uh, you should check it out because it, it's it is on there. Yeah, I don't know why I never watched it. I I, I should watch it. I probably would like it. Give it. Uh, I want to see the wire too. Then you liked Malcolm in the Middle, really right? <laughs> you liked Brian Cranston and Malcolm in the Middle. Oh. <laughs> he, just, he just saw the adult uh, version of it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, um, but real quick, uh, I, I won't go into real a quick. We're yeah. using that phrase here. Yeah, I won't. I won't go into a huge version of uh, of Saul's storyline. But basically, um, you know, he's afraid that uh, that Lalo's going to come for retribution, kill them, and stuff like that. So they're him and and. Uh, uh, Rhea Seahorn, I can't think of Kim, 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 yeah. They're hiding out in a hotel. Uh, Kim wants as many pro bono cases as she can get, uh, which they oblige her by because they are way back top. They have an entire room uh, filled with probably thousands of files that are waiting court dates. Um, yeah, she takes 20 files, which is a lot. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of clients to have. Um and then, uh, you know, he almost jizzed in his fucking pants. He's so excited to take so many cases. <laughs> so, uh, Saul talks to Mike. Mike says, Hey, Lalo's going to die. You're good. Um, he, he goes and tells Kim that, that everything's good. They're, they're free. They don't have to worry about anything. And she starts talking about, um, how Howard came up to her and said that, uh, that Jimmy was, you know, he was watching out for her. Jimmy wasn't you know, was bad news for her or whatever. And she was, you know, really pissed off at Howard and everything. I thought Howard was kind of a dick uh, in the scene, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, he obviously was, like, doing it to, like, impress his associate. Mm -hmm. And just be a douche in general. And she was right. He was, I mean, he was, you know, considering the fact that she was a woman that he had, like, you know, white knight or whatever they call that. Yeah, exactly. And so... Whatever those cucks call it. (laughs) So Those beta cuck shills. Um, so she, uh, yeah. she, um, she says to Jimmy, cause remember way back when there was the, uh, the, not Mesa Verde, the, uh, what was it called? Sandpiper. Yeah. The Sandpiper, uh, Sandpiper case. We don't case. mean the uh, sexual technique either. No, no, we're not talking about the sexual, we're not talking about the pipeline. We're not talking about the, uh, no, we're not talking about Sandpiper air from the, uh, 1990s show Wings. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, what do they call it? The frozen pipeline? Exactly. Alaskan pipeline? You know what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, not like I haven't... Uh, I'm experienced, Mike. Um, but, uh, oh, I don't think you know what that would mean. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we... Um, uh, so she says, hey, if we did something that got Howard, like, disbarred or whatever, like, you know, was really bad for Howard, they'd have to pull out of the Sandpiper deal and... Uh, you know, Cliff would settle. Yeah, Cliff Maine would settle immediately because they don't have enough people to handle this whole thing themselves, and they put so much work into it, they'd settle for whatever. And you get twenty percent of that, and basically they figure it out, and it's like two million dollars is what he would get. And he's like, "What would you, you know, what would you do with the money?" And she's like, "I would open up, you know, my own practice. I'd hire this person. I'd buy a million dollar car. Yeah, <laughs> I'd hire this for very good investment." By the way, million dollar car. That's a pull you over. Um, but she's like, I'd hire this lawyer. I'd hire that lawyer. Um, the you know different people we've met throughout the uh, the series who you know are very good, competent lawyers. And she said that she'd give you know she'd take pro pro bono cases and give everyone uh, the kind of defense that they could only usually get from millionaires. How I mean, it's okay. Two million dollars. What's their business plan? That's what that's right what I was thinking. Two million dollars will keep them in business for a little while. But not forever. Is I she? Think they mentioned her billing rate, which is like I think they say is like two two hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, two fifty an hour. Yeah, because and, and I mean that's inflation as well. I mean two fifty an hour is an insane amount of money. That's mm-hmm. like ten thousand dollars a week. Yeah. So if exactly. you get so if you get people of that quality that will are used to that amount of money and then insurance and that kind of shit, you're just burning through that money. Yeah, like exactly. If you get five people, that's fifty thousand a week. Say like. Half that again in benefits. That's like seventy five grand every week. She's just 
Yeah. And then no money coming in. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know exactly what her plan is. If she thinks Jimmy's just going to, you know, continue to make this kind of money or whatever that he's made. And, and yeah, he's just like, Oh, you're a cartel lawyer. You'll help. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly what her plan is, but she's like, that's what she would do with the money. And he's like, I her her head's really in the clouds too. Cause she, he's like, Oh, I, I was going to say we'd buy a house. And, so, <laughs> and she's like, Oh, we'd have money left over for that too. Uh, so yeah, her head's really in the clouds, but she really wants to, obviously, she really cares about justice. She really cares about people and she wants to she wants to do good. She seems like and I don't know if we're going to find this out later or not, but it seems like she has something she's trying to make up for almost that she is like yeah, pa- that she's like pathologically wants to to do the most good that she possibly can in the world. It's hard to say though because remember the the, the flashback a couple episodes ago to her as like a child, who yeah. like, you know, had like a strong sense of justice. You know, I mean, some people are just like that. Yeah, that's my younger, true. my younger uh, daughter has always been very strict about the rules and like impressed upon by them and that sort of thing. She's, you know, like she's always been concerned with that kind of thing. So some people are just, yeah, that's true. But anyway, so um, Saul's like, you know, oh, but we're just talking. We can't do that and everything. And she's basically like, you know, Howard's an asshole. And like, she's like, we're talking about one lawyer, one a career setback for one lawyer. That's it. And all all these old people will get their money back. They'll be able to use it now. The lawyers will get paid, you know. And she's like, and you can see this is it's heart wrenching because you can see the look on and Bob Odenkirk is fantastic in this scene but you can see the look on his face where he's like I've ruined her I've ruined this person because never before before me would she have thought about any of this would she have even conceived of ruining a man's career in the way that she's talking about to get what she wants and he's just like I've I've destroyed her like I've taken this beautiful thing and 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 killed it. And it's, it's so heart wrenching as she talks and they, they just, they keep cutting back to his reaction shots. And it's, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Brian Cranston and how, how great he was at reacting to things like how great he was at acting without saying anything. And, and Bob Bodenkirk, uh, you know, definitely ca- to me, definitely captures that in this episode. What, what did you think, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Dynamite drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I really, yeah, the acting was really great in this, and like I said, it's it's hard to say what was more like you know dramatically intense this mm-hmm. uh, conversation about ruining this guy who was kind of like been you know a, not really an antagonist this entire time. I mean, he's yeah. he seems to like uh, Jimmy McGill, which is you know seems to be more reason why uh, Jimmy McGill hates him. Yeah, exactly. Like he like he flat out conf- he tells you know Kim about the bowling ball thing and that kind of stuff, and like. You know, it's like compared to like, you know, just going out into the fucking desert and almost being murdered by a, you know, a gang of, uh, you know, thieves. Who gives a shit about a stupid fucking, you know, BMW or whatever it is? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, so, you know, she, and then you know, just the way he treats and talks to her and like, you know, she was an associate there and I think they never like, wasn't it they never like hired her or didn't want to promote her, so. Yeah, she got just, stuck you know, stuck doing all the grunt work and shit. Yeah, so she's just, you know, like, it's it's her time to like say, fuck you, Howard, you know, and. Yeah, like you said, Jimmy has definitely contributed to it. And, and it's weird because he's done this before where he pretends like he doesn't want to do it, you know, mm-hmm. but it just encourages her more. But I think he actually doesn't want to do it. Like that, I think to him is too. He doesn't want to, just like she's, quote, in the game now because she talked to Lalo. He doesn't, I think he would do it if if it wouldn't involve her. I don't think he wants to, he would do it for her uh, if it if she could, if she wasn't involved in it. I don't think he wants to pull her down any farther i think that's his hesitation yeah see i'm also not sure though because like uh i I mean i think kim legitimately does think it's like a temporary setback for him because i mean if he's disbarred he could come back and plus i think like his father own so he's well off financially i mean Mm -hmm. even if he's okay yeah yeah but she she is being a little bit naive about exactly what it would entail in order to uh to do this but Ben, what did you what did you think of uh, of Kim and Jimmy's storyline? Uh, knowing that the only thing you know about it is what Mike and I just said about it. I wish I had something to add. I, I'm going to be like uh, Monty with the dynamite dropping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so you guys 
you guys think I should watch Saul and then Breaking Bad and then The Wire? Interesting. What order? It's up to you because uh, I don't know when the last season of uh, Better Call Saul is going to come out. Right, that's true. And especially with like the Corona thing and that kind of stuff. I mean, honestly, maybe if you're going to watch those two, you should watch them like next to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I would probably say um, if I would just watch The Wire because The Wire is about five seasons, ten episodes a season. Um, each of one's an hour. That's a lot yeah. of watching. Um, so you could watch that. Then you could watch uh, Breaking Bad in order. Then you could watch Better Call Saul up to what they have, I guess. And then you'd have to wait like the rest of us. Well, yeah. Well, by the time by the okay. time you you finish the wire and then move to Breaking Bad and finish that, the last season of Better Call Saul probably will be out. Yeah, depending on how quickly you watch and stuff. Right. And I mean, obviously, Kiefer yeah. Sutherland's in none of these shows, so it's going to take you <laughs> forever to get to him. Actually, no. Um, <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland is in the background of every one of these shows. Yeah, he makes a cameo in each one of these series. <laughs> We're just not going to tell you where. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland plays um, Walt Jr.'s friend in Breaking Bad. Yep. <laughs> he, they call him Lewis. <laughs> What's funny is I was never really obsessed with Kiefer Sutherland. I just really liked 24. Oh my God. And then he comes in and he goes, come on, Walt Jr., let's go get some fucking breakfast. <laughs> He's like, call me Flynn. <laughs> oh my God. He's just like, he's like, Are, aren't you a 50 year old man? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah. In the wire, he uh, he reprises his role from uh, from uh, that movie. What was that that movie? Pump up the volume. <laughs> that's uh, Christian Slater. Or, he, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Christian Slater. Is that the cool. is that is that what it's called though? Pump up the volume. Yes. Where he plays like a like a rebel DJ. <laughs> yes. Oh God. <laughs> oh, Christian Slater. Hey, hey Ben, uh, what's your least favorite Kiefer Sutherland movie? Um, probably, uh, the, uh, the cowboy way. That looked pretty bad. <laughs> oh, did you not even see it? No, I didn't even, like, I just look at the cover and I'm like, that's a terrible movie, you can tell. It's not even worth seeing. <laughs> hey, Ben, uh, here's an idea for a new segment. Yeah. For Sutherland uh, Project for us. What did you, what did you say, Mike? No, all I'll say is. I said, like, I each week, like a, can we get Ben to call and review a Kiefer Sutherland project? Oh, yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah, you need to watch... I was never, like, a huge Kiefer Sutherland... You need to watch one Kiefer Sutherland like movie huge, uh... every oh. week, and and then just call in, and we'll we'll, we'll keep you on for about uh, half an hour, and you can talk about Kiefer Sutherland. 90 movie. minutes. That's my segment. Yeah. Yeah, Woody Harrelson, yeah, no, honestly, Kiefer though, Sutherland, uh, Dylan McDermott, Ernie Hudson. That's the Cowboy you know, Way. Better to do oh, Get out of here. You want to know the plot of the Cowboy Way? <laughs> buddies. You know what's funny, though? Is- listen to this, though. Buddies, Pepper Lewis, Woody Harrelson, and Sonny Jill Strap, <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. What the oh fuck? God. Pepper Lewis and Sonny Jill Strap. Were these were these was names? That, was this... Yeah, go ahead. Were these names written by a Canadian character? Yeah, exactly. Uh, who are champions? Like they're elves going into a magical forest. <laughs> oh, come on, Sonny Jill Strap. Oh, Pepper, you tease me. <laughs> uh, grown men. I'm, <laughs> I'm drowning in the molasses swamp. Um. Buddies Pepper Lewis and Sonny Jillstrap, who are championship rodeo partners, travel to New York to find their missing friend, Nacho Salazar. Get out of here. <laughs> yep. Not Salamanca? No, unfortunately not. Uh, who's played by Joaquin Martinez. After he disappears in New York City to pick up his daughter, Teresa, uh, when Pepper and Sonny find that neither is anywhere to be found, they go about the wacky adventure... <laughs> Of finding Nacho and Teresa, and in the process, test the foundations of their friendship. Holy oh, fuck! No. This sounds. I said to say boundary. <laughs> this sounds like a uh, like an eighties uh, sitcom. Along the way, yeah, 
they <laughs> along the way they find themselves entwined in their inner work in the inner workings of a New York sweatshop where Teresha has been enslaved after traveling to the USA from Cuba, going about things in a cowboy way. <laughs> Pepper and Sonny put their small town skills to the test in a big city kind of way and rescue Teresa from the thugs. Holy shit. And then it says written by Chris. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought, thought the movie was written by this person. And this review is written by someone named Chris Royball. And um, he left his, uh, his email address on. <laughs> Which I will not give out. Oh, oh hey, uh, hey Ben, have you seen the Lost Boys? Yeah, uh, it, it's funny because <laughs> in the process of defending the fact that I was never actually the big for total and family you guys thought I was, I couldn't off the top of my head think of a lot of bad movies that he had done. <laughs> which kind of uh-uh. you know, disproves the point I was trying to make because I thought. Man, I I like the Lost Boys. I like a Time to Kill. I like Eye for an Eye. I even kind of like Phone Booth. That like it, a lot of people didn't like it, but I yeah, actually right, thought right, he was even booth. kind of a good. Huh? Mike said he forgot was he was in Phone Booth. I actually I didn't think that movie was that bad. It was gimmicky, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah, like I, even though you don't really see him, you just hear him on the phone. Like I thought he played a pretty. Uh, you know, good bad guy in that uh, too, and then of course I was obsessed with Twenty Four for a while. So th- the only movie I could remember where I just looked at the cover and I'm like, "Oh my god, is that embarrassing?" Was the Cowboy Way? <laughs> you were embarrassed on his behalf. <laughs> I was. I was trying really hard to think of a bad movie you'd done. I'm like, well, I've never seen the Cowboy Way. But well, you I can f- tell there's no chance it was good. You found it. I was gonna say. <laughs> the movie was made for thirty-five million dollars. Its its gross was twenty million two hundred eighty thousand dollars. What about Young Guns One and Two, Ben? <laughs> uh, not a not a huge fan, but I I, I guess they weren't like absolutely horrible. I, I I saw them once a really long time ago. I can't really remember. Gotcha. Listen, yeah. to, listen, hey, to the, obsessed with this. listen to this trivia. Charlie Sheen turned down the role of Pepper Lewis, making this the, yeah. the first movie he ever turned down. <laughs> making this the second of two movies with the word way in the title. The first was Carlito's way. What, oh, no. what the fuck? What? I don't I'm know. Carly? What does that mean that he turned down two movies with the word way in the title? Or was he in Carlito's so. way? I think it's he turned down two movies wow. with the word way in the title. He didn't like the word way apparently in 1994. Because yeah. so many people got him because it, like he would say no way and then they'd say way. Um, here's a quote though. This is Pepper. Maybe this line is the reason that Charlie Sheen, although this is this a very Charlie Sheen line, as you'll see. Uh, quote Pepper If it's got hair, I can write it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> if it's got a beat, I can dance to it. So apparently, he's never met uh, Demi Moore. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I guess not. So. <laughs> uh, actually, Pe- Pepper is Woody Harrelson. Um, you know, and uh, he was in that uh, the millionaire movie with Demi Moore. So maybe that's where he got the idea for that line. From. Oh, the proposal, me? Uh, indecent proposal. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Uh, ben, hey, Ben, have you ever seen a Demi Moore's huge bush? <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh, yeah, in the, oh, in the 80s. It's it's cool. Look it up on your phone right now and then react to it in real time. <laughs> No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, do you want to come hey, back every week? Bush and then double that. Yeah, think of the largest. Yeah, yeah, think of the largest bush you've ever seen, and then double it, and and that's that's her bush. Now, pretend I had uh, a lion's mane around it, it, but thicker. <laughs> and then pretend there were but trolls hey, living inside. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? Speaking of Charlie Sheen, I really liked it when you and Carol reviewed Chase. I I really like that movie. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, we, we had twenty five years ago. We we we. <laughs> We oh yeah! Did you just find those tapes recently? Yeah, we reviewed the uh, the chase. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the chase is a like I remember watching that movie and kind of not liking it. I guess when it first came out, or just thinking it was okay. Rewatching it, I was like, you know, that's actually a pretty good movie. Isn't uh, Henry Rollins in there? <laughs> Henry Rollins is in it. Yes. yes. And then isn't like Flea and Anthony and he- of uh, yes. RHCP? Yep, that's right. They're they're in it uh, playing rednecks in a truck. <laughs> I think uh, Anthony. And, and I think I mean no one hundred percent that Anthony Kiedis is also in a uh, Point Break. Oh yes. See, the, you know, the Chase had the unfortunate uh, distinction of coming out the same year that Speed did, and also the same year yeah. that O.J. Simpson murdered uh, his wife and a waiter. That was a much more interesting chase. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. That's the best line from Norm Macdonald. Hey, uh, Ben, have you ever seen uh, when Norm Macdonald hosted the ESPYs? And um, he's like, uh, you know, he's talking about, uh, you know, he's making jokes and everything, obviously, because that's what Norm does. And he ta- he calls out Charles Woodson and says, uh, Charles Woodson, uh, you know, is in the audience. Charles Woodson became the first ever defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. That's something they can never take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, then. <laughs> because, like. That is fucking hilarious. And it was like, it was probably a week, I think, after the end of the civil case when uh, OJ had to sell his, um, his Eisman trophy or whatever to pay the Goldmans. <laughs> so it was super timely, too. <laughs> oh, it was brutal. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, the, yeah. The, the best part, too, is he goes, just a word of warning. <laughs> oh, God. Didn't uh, Reggie Bush didn't have to give back the Heisman, right? Because he got caught taking money, but he didn't give back the Heisman, did he? I don't think so. Oh, he, that's a good question. I don't know. He didn't murder anyone either. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, I don't think he had to give back I the Heisman. I thought there was a pretty harsh penalty, though, where I was like, oh, damn. Like, I can't. They're making him do that. I forget what it was, though. Um, I think they made him um <laughs> recreate the OJ crime scene. No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know exactly what. Is what's he there. like banned from like you know? Obviously, is it all NCAA like events or something? Like that? Yeah, I think so. I don't so think he can. PhD. He can't come within fifty yards of a uh, Heisman event. It's it's like uh it's like he uh, is on the registry or something. What's real weird to me, right. I think Ricky Williams is like a pariah too, but I mean like uh I don't know, it's just odd to me that like it's almost like equated like him and like uh, you know, someone who like cheated, like kinda like, you know, it's like they don't let him around like uh football anymore. Who is that one running back for Ohio State that turned out to be like a fucking asshole? Well that's uh that narrows it down. Uh, <laughs> was it Maurice Maurice Cl- Yeah, Maurice Claret, 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 that's right. Claret. Maurice Claret, yeah. I say, I hope it's not Eddie George. I uh, I stayed at a hotel next to one of his restaurants once, <laughs> and that's my Eddie George story. Eddie George, nice. Uh, who's the most famous person yeah, you've ever like, met, you, Ben? You... Kiefer fucking Sutherland. <laughs> most, that... Yeah, who's the most famous person you've ever met? Actually, I, I've met quite a few to win. Uh, I met Dennis Rodman when I was a little kid. Hmm. I've met Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, I didn't really meet Troy Aikman, but I saw him kind of up close. Uh, he was, like, running on a treadmill uh, in the Wins uh, Health Club, and I was kind of, like, on the outside, just on the outside of the glass, so I just kind of passed by him. With your mouth p- pressed up against the glass? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I've met uh, Clyde Drexler, Dwight Howard, Herman Cain, uh, uh, Jason Kidd. Uh, Herman Cain's got to be the best one, though. <laughs> yeah, it was that's really, the it, least impressive one. Did I, did I, Mike, that's did I that's the CEO of, of Godfather's I, Pizza. <laughs> right, I had made fun of him so much, and then he was so he was such a nice guy. I felt guilty. I'm like, damn it, why did I make fun of him? He's a good guy. <laughs> uh yeah, they're all they're all they all seem nice when you meet them. I mean, all those fucking assholes. Maybe Donald Trump would be the only one that wouldn't seem nice when uh, when uh, you meet him. But I'm sure right. I'm sure George Bush is uh, like fucking pleasant as pie. And um, you know some of these 
some of these other fucking assholes too. Like uh, you know, Bill Clinton's super charming. Um, you know, and there are, most of them are just narcissists. <laughs> but <laughs> but he's you know like he was like a little nuts. Um, but it was you know it was fun to watch him. The ones that don't, the ones that know they don't have a chance to win, are the most fun to watch. <laughs> Because there's no filter. They they don't have to filter themselves. Yeah. Is that oh, uh, another show celebrity I met. Uh, What'd you say, Mike? Quick, though, uh, another mm-hmm. celebrity I met. Yeah. Another celebrity I met was uh, Dana White. Oh, and, okay. You know, UFC is headquartered in Las Vegas. I actually ran yeah. into to him in the, at the grocery store. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it was pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. You so that was, uh, that was a little more random. Show because me to be in the UFC. <laughs> Did, did he bring his own? Did he bring his own bag? Did, did was he using plastic bags or did he bring his own bag? Was he being environmentally conscious? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dana White. But yeah, that. But yeah, that was a little more random because it's the grocery store. Whereas at Win, like you know, Win's a pretty high end hotel. So you kind of expect professional athletes and. You know, some celebrities to stay there. Oh yeah, there's celebrities coming in and out of there all the time. I mean, it's not it's not like our other friend who uh, who went and shot a bunch of people with Eminem on Eight Mile, but um, but it's right. pretty but it's pretty impressive nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he doesn't listen. Um, I assume he doesn't listen anyway. I've never heard anything from him. Um. <laughs> Uh, Mike, I don't. Do you know that story, yeah, I was Mike? Yeah, gonna say, man. Uh... Which one? <laughs> so, uh, the, he said he said this when Andy mentioned that he saw uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, right? Okay. Um. So, like, Andy was uh, like, beast. That that was that was it, right, Ben? Yeah, Andy and his friend Kellen ran into Roddy Roddy Piper at a bar. So they told. Um, I'm assuming, Mike, you know the friend we're talking about, the one that uh, Ben was good friends with. He lived close to him. <laughs> Used to play basketball at his house. You know who we mean. Do you mean the one that uh, was uh, left completely unmolested by the uh, state troopers while poor Ben uh, had his yes. shit ripped out of the trunk? <laughs> exactly. Okay. That one, yes. <laughs> We've told that story on the air, by the way. The what? The one who had his stuff completely unmolested by the straight trooper while your stuff was thrown all over the place. Oh, right. When you guys were pulled over. The one the one who tasted every beer in the world and Budweiser is the best. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's actually a better story. <laughs> that's more of a wilderness. But anyway, so, um, so <laughs> Andy texted him or whatever and told him, that you know he had that he'd met him. He was like, oh, you know, I met this guy at a bar, or whatever, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper. And he goes, yeah, that sounds pretty suspicious. You know, I was shooting uh, people with Eminem on Eight Mile, too. Like, yeah. how how is that anywhere near the same thing? <laughs> like, it's so believable to run into an ex wrestler at a bar at in a Las bar? Vegas, oh, where yeah. a bunch of people, you know, like a city that a bunch of people frequent. It's a tourist attraction. I heard he wasn't that rowdy in person. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard too. I thought nice Andy's. Re- yeah, I thought Andy's response was the funniest. Andy goes, "I didn't say I wrestled him at Madison Square Garden." Right. <laughs> I mean, that would be closer uh, than committing fel- felony assault with uh, Eminem. <laughs> 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 Oh fuck, man! Guy's gonna get, you're gonna get him all mad. He's gonna quit his subway job again. <laughs> hey, Ben, do you want to stick around for dumpster time? <laughs> oh, we're still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one o'clock in the morning now, isn't it? I don't even know what time it is. Yeah, it's like twelve nineteen. That's very late. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably have to do. Can you do it tomorrow? Me or Ben? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe you, both of you. Sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> ben, I'm going to give you, if you want to come on tomorrow, you are more than welcome to come on. I'm going to give you uh, an assignment, though. Uh, I'm going to uh, text you a uh, a YouTube video that you got to watch because that's what we're talking about tomorrow. It's like <laughs> 22 minutes. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it. All right. 
Uh, Thanks all, for joining us, Ben. All of a sudden, he's too good for us. The sh- uh, Kiefer yeah, Sutherland's in the show. He's got fucking plans. By the way. <laughs> this show's called 25. It's a sequel. <laughs> what, a movie Jupiter that has 25 hours? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That they should make a science fiction version of the show and just takes place on Saturn or something. Yeah, the only difference is they're wearing spacesuits. And it's called, you know, 865. <laughs> so instead of 24 episodes in a season, there's 800 episodes this season. It's an 800 episode arc. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, I see that they. I said they found a terrorist, but it's only episode five hundred and forty-three. <laughs> so I think so. There's the yeah, there's got there's a twist coming. I know. It. See, but I always thought the ultimate move would be for uh, them to do another season of twenty-four, but then just have them like solve like everything in the first episode, and like the rest of it is just like them like getting to know each other, right? They're just hanging out. <laughs> episode- yeah, Jack, just like uh, so. You guys got anything for me? He's like. No, no. Uh, the, home and you see him like drinking with his hand trembling. Episode two. Episode two. <laughs> they're at a barbecue, and Jack's just barbecuing. Uh, one of them, Chloe, or somebody, comes up to him and is like, uh, "Hey, do do we have any uh, chips?" And he just do 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 do. They do like the the, the four way cut thing. Like, he talks <laughs> to the grocery store. Like, hey, can you get some chips? Like, yeah. There's just an, just an empty table with a or a table with an empty bowl. On it. Yes. <laughs> And then, like you said, yeah, in like the t- upper left hand corner, it's like, uh, hey, uh, let me get some chips. Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's like, wait a second, where's my daughter? Like, oh, she, uh, she's in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my god. Oh, that'd be great. On Mars. Uh, you, you, ever know, see, uh, you ever see the movie? Uh, you ever see the TV show Life on Mars? That's terrible. No, I haven't. Keep it the what show I eat cut out there? Life on Mars? Oh, no. Yeah, it's not good. You don't need to see Life on Mars. Mark, were you, Mark, were you just better reminding me of this part in Wayne's World where he goes, uh, tomorrow uh, we're uh, hosting the shitty Beatles. <laughs> and uh, Wayne goes, the How shitty are Beatles, are they any good? Uh, and, and Meatloaf goes, they suck. <laughs> and Wayne goes, so it's not just a clever name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh shit! You, I, you brought it. You brought it. Because you brought it up, kind of excited. You're like, "Have you ever seen the? You know, I, I even forget <laughs> the title already." But you're like, "Have you ever seen the show?" And uh, I'm Life like, no, on Mars. Like, oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I forgot to mention. Uh, speaking of shitty Mike Myers projects, not that Wayne's World is shitty, uh, but no, I saw uh, just for the sake of fun and slash, uh, you know, just see how bad actually was. I watched the Love Guru over the. week. Oh my god! It's 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 so bad. It's it's I don't even understand what's going on in it. It's so bad. It, it's just re- it, it, uh, yeah. Yes, we should do it for dumpster diving. Don't waste. Okay. Don't waste watching yeah, a yeah, terrible movie. Yes. I'll watch, watch it. it, please. Yeah, I'll watch it, and we can do it next week for dumpster diving. Sounds good, Ben. You on? Ben, you got to watch the Love Guru. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I can. That, that's like the cowboy should- way. You can tell it. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should j- just for fun. You should like suggest uh, to your wife that you watch the Love Guru, and then just like when you see stuff that's supposed to be funny, just like laugh more than you should. You just, like, oh, that was the funniest movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best prank ever. <laughs> and just get a reaction. Like, She'd be so confused. <laughs> and then halfway through, she starts just laughing. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> Just tell her it's this amazing movie and laugh at the lamest parts. Oh my god! Oh, I love, I love it. And like whenever she like, does, like, do you want me to pause this? Like, what? Why, why should I pause? <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. So I, I see. Oh uh, yeah, I'll watch it. We'll do. We'll do it. Yeah, it's uh, very late for me. I have to get going. Yeah, yeah. We got to wrap this up. This is a two-hour long podcast now. Yeah, Ben, it was nice talking with you. Yeah, nice surprise. All right, it was it was it was great dropping in on you guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right, give, well, uh, we love. Give my regards to the wife and the uh, the dog. Yep. <laughs>
Uh, but we will. Right. Uh, well, I'll talk to you guys later. Yep, yeah, we will see you next time, see everybody. Next time. Uh, thanks for time. Ben for uh, you know uh, dropping in, and uh, yeah, have a good week. The, the guest, the guest appearance. <laughs> Surprising cameo by Ben. Right. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah.